Thank you very much, and I thank the organizer for inviting me to this beautiful event. Uh, also, I'd like to thank the previous speaker, Nick Spanos, because uh, he introduced uh, some of the concepts uh, like smart contracts, consensus, and such that I'm going to speak about now. And well, you know, it's uh, it's still early, and I know it's it's difficult for everybody. I, I used to be a professor, and uh, you know, experienced professors still can lecture without actually waking up. But uh, for for you, it might be more complicated. I know, so I, I will try to keep it light. Okay. Anyway, uh, so these are um, uh, some nice pictures about machine economy, its importance, and uh, this sort of thing. Uh, of course, they are important, and uh, it was the original motivation of, of IOTA. We uh, were thinking about building a crypto system for uh, use in uh, Internet of Things IoT, so hence the, the name. And in IoT, uh, as you can imagine, there would be a lot of, a lot of small value transactions, uh, a lot of maybe data transactions without monetary value at all. Um, and of course, you would not be willing to pay transaction fees for, for this stuff. Because if you, if you pay like $5 for... Uh, each of your six million transactions, it could be a problem, you know. So, um, this is the main feature that we are um, trying to really maintain, and uh, uh, it's not easy because, well, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to explain why uh, it's really uh, an untrivial problem how to build a crypto system without transaction fees at all. But it, it's worth it because when you when you can do it, uh, it it's really cool. Okay. A couple of words about IOTA Foundation. It's a non-profit foundation registered in Germany, and uh, there are many cool people there. And yeah, uh, but let me uh, go to the basic principles of IOTA. Okay, so we want a system without transaction fees. This means uh, that uh, it has to be a collaborative system. It has to uh, work on the basis of I help you, I vouch for your transactions, and you help me. You validate my transactions. So we kind of cross-validate our transactions, transactions and everybody is happy. So uh, there could not be any dichotomy between uh, like uh, miners and simple users. Because if you have that, uh, uh, these miners, um, people who have some state, well, if, uh, if there are entities uh, who provide the consensus for the system, like miners, naturally they would want to charge transaction fees. So if you want a fearless system, you it has to be a collaborative, uh, working on the basis of this, you help me, I help you, a principle. Now, uh, a usual problem in such a system uh, is called free riders. Uh, so for, if you think, for example, about BitTorrent, uh, there, uh, 
some people uh, would just download uh, the stuff they want and then just disconnect. So they would use the system but uh, not care about helping the others. And then this means that we somehow need to design the principles of, of the system, uh, the rules of the system in such a way uh, that this holds true. So if you help the others and the others will help you. However, if you don't help the others, the others will not help you uh, too. Yeah. Also, um, if you uh, don't have miners, you cannot have blocks like in Bit Bitcoin, Ethereum, and uh, uh, many other blockchains. Uh, and you kind of come naturally to this DAG directed acyclic graph ledger. So uh, this is uh, the best picture that I made uh, in my whole life, if you judge by the number of uh, times it, it can be found in the internet around. So it's, it's from the original white paper of, uh, of IOTA. It represents this directed acyclic graph. So each uh, small box here is a transaction that you put to the ledger uh, yourself. And uh, each transaction has two arrows uh, which represent approvals. So when you put your transaction in the, into the ledger, uh, when you send it uh, to the ledger, you approve two previous transactions of the others. So this is the help the others part. And eventually, others will approve your transactions, will vouch for it, will verify if it's OK uh, from the all points of view. And it goes like that. Ah, uh, by the way, I have to warn you that if you want to use this picture, you are welcome to do it, but uh, it's better not to uh, take uh, the one from the white paper, but ask me for a corrected version, because in the white paper I, I for forgot a couple of uh, arrows, and uh, there was some transaction in the middle without uh, outgoing stuff from it, so... <laughs> yeah. And um, incidentally, it also leads to freedom, because you are free to, to put your stuff into the ledger in, in the way you want. So if you want to construct your own blockchain inside of this uh, DAG structure, you are, fr you are welcome to do it. Okay. And this is actually very important for what I'm going to talk uh, about now, which is uh, smart contracts. Ah, uh, sorry, uh, before that, just a couple of other cool pictures. Um, so this uh, is a comparison of uh, a blockchain architecture which has an inherent bottleneck, which is the need of putting blocks together. And also, yeah, these cool animations about uh, being Phyllis, uh, you know. Okay, <laughs> sorry for that. Um, now, uh, yeah, uh, something about our, our roadmap, which uh, I think I will also skip. Uh, now, IOTA smart contracts. So, as I mentioned, uh, a cool feature uh, of IOTA is uh, freedom. You are free to, to put your stuff into the tangle, uh, as we call it, into this DAG, uh, the way you want. And this means that, uh, uh, like, every, uh, everyone can... Uh, can run a smart contract validated by not necessarily the, the whole system. 
because you know if if you if you necessarily want that the whole system validates all smart contracts that exist, then such a thing will never scale, right? So we have this flexibility in IOTA, for example. Uh, uh, myself, uh, Kevin and Rohit can uh, form a committee of validators and uh, just run our sub-blockchain inside the Tangle and uh, do cool stuff on it. Yeah. So this is what, um, uh, well, okay, these are some technical details uh, which I only leave here and show you to, to convince you that uh, we are talking about something real and well thought. And uh, yeah, it's um, smart contract is a, is a program with the code uh, which is kind of executed by uh, by the participants of the of the system and uh, well uh, there are different vir virtual machines that we support and plan to support so for instance we uh, have now uh, this web assembly and uh, also EVM but we are planning to support others, like, for example, uh, a Cartesi. This is a, a really, really cool project. You have to check it. I would, at least I advise for it. But um, anyways, uh, uh, we also can, uh, thanks to this uh, freedom of uh, putting uh, your own smart contract chains uh, wherever you want, uh, you can achieve a really high throughput. So you can have a lot of stuff happening off Tangle, off, off main chain, uh, so that uh, the overall throughput of the whole system is huge. But I think the main uh, selling point of IOTA smart contracts is this. Um, these uh, um, uh, chains, these uh, uh, individual smart contract uh, chains can exchange assets natively without the need of uh, uh, bridges, uh, additional cross-chain solutions and, uh, and such. So in any case, uh, I have to confess I'm I'm not a big specialist in, uh, in smart contracts uh, area. My area is, uh, well, probability and stochastic processes, but I also understand a bit about general consensus and distributed systems. Uh, and you are invited to come to our community Discord. Uh, there are um, uh, channels about smart contracts and uh, the main guy uh, in IOTA Foundation who is taking care of that is called Evaldas, and uh, he is usually there uh, answering questions and uh, discussing and, uh, and so on. So, well, I think I, I'm done for today, I'm a, a bit ahead of time. Questions? <laughs>